my channel. And today I want to show you this town hall. Hey, what's up, guys? Halfway broadcasting from around the world, Phenomenal Pen Cambodia. Uh, that was a little intro from uh, Stray Nick. She's probably gonna be <laughs> she's probably gonna be really mad that I actually put it on here, uh, but I thought it was cute, so I am including it in the video. Uh, but guys, this is just more footage from when we went to uh, Phnom Reap and Wat Prasat. Uh, and I have a video, uh, a short video that I made just showing some highlights, a few highlights of that trip with some like music playing. Uh, so I'll leave the link in the description of the video to that video, uh, as well as just uh, talk over this video. This is just uh, more footage and, you know, see more things from that trip, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, again, it was about 25 kilometers outside of Phnom Penh. Uh, so what is that? Something like, I don't know, 18 miles or 19 miles, something like that. So it's not that far outside of Phnom Penh. Uh, and it was definitely like a cool place to go and saw some nice things, uh, especially at Wat Prasat. It was, I've been to quite a few Wats here in, in Cambodia and some are very nice. They're all like, you know, they're all cool and unique and have something about them. Uh, but this one was like aesthetically the nicest, most pleasing one. Like the landscape was just uh, beautiful. Uh, what you're seeing here, this one is Phnom Reap. So the story behind this one is it was made in like the 90s or in 1990. Uh, but I think it was made to like emulate uh, Siem Reap, like that kind of like structure. So it's like a new building or a newer building they've made recently. Uh, what, 20, 30 years ago. Um, but it was made like with the style of like the old architecture. But it's not actually like a, it's not an ancient structure. It's a newer structure that was built just in the ancient style. Um, and then the other one you'll see later is the one that's uh, Wat Prasat. It's like P-R-A-S-A-T, Wat Prasat. Um, and that one was just like absolutely gorgeous. It was so beautiful. Uh, so, I don't know, yeah, if you're looking for like a day trip, just something to do, not too far from Phnom Penh, and something cheap, and you know, outside of the usual thing that maybe you do, feel free to check that out. Uh, also, recently, we went to uh, the National Museum. It was, our, it, it was our anniversary yesterday, which was Sunday, uh, the 9th of December, and we went to the National Museum and saw a show called, I think it was called Earth and Sky. Uh, definitely, I have a, 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 I'm going to be making a video about that one also. I have some uh, clips and stuff from that show. Uh, but definitely, guys, go check that one out. That was so cool. It was at the National Museum, like I said. And it was just like, it was a really cool show. It's only an hour. Uh, tickets are between $15, I think, to like maybe $30 or $35, depending on uh, which seating you get. They're kind of all the same. I, I, I only, I got the cheapest ones. And the only difference between mine and the like $35 ones, I think you get like a pillow in your seat for the $35 one. But yeah, if you're all about sitting in the front row and getting a pillow, definitely go for it. Um, it might even be a better experience, obviously, whatever. Uh, but yeah, that show Earth and Sky, I think it was called, at the National Museum was like absolutely gorgeous. And it was really cool, so I would definitely check that out again. Uh, but I just want to speak about some things in this video, I guess. Just going back to uh, the roots, I guess, of my videos, of my channel. I've been uh, not making nearly as many videos. I used to put out like a video like at least three, four, five times a week, and now I'm barely putting out a video a week, if not less than that. Um, I'm just incredibly busy at work, and unfortunately the channel just doesn't get the love and attention that it needs anymore. Um, plus I'm trying to do more with some of my videos, and then that uh, takes up more of my time even with the less time that I have now, trying to put more time into making videos uh, <laughs> can be tiresome or taking a lot of time. But I just want to talk about some things. Uh, since I've been here now, like I've been here about two and a half years about, and on my channel, like I still get a lot of the same questions and a lot of things are still the same and a lot of things are different. So maybe like starting at the beginning, I always get questions still about visas. Um, I'm not an expert on the subject by any means. But basically, 
If you're coming here to be a teacher, that's where I'm going to be most relevant to you. If you want to do something outside of teaching, um, you might have to do a little research. I can give you a little bit of information, but I, I, I really just know about teaching. <laughs> uh, so if you want to come here, you want to be an English teacher, uh, you can come here. When you get your visa, get an e-visa, uh, or like a looking for work visa. They're the two visas that are available on arrival. Um, one, is a, one is called a T-visa or tourist visa. The other one is an e-visa, looking for work visa. So if you get a tourist visa, uh, it's good for one month. And then after one month, if you want to stay in Cambodia, you would have to leave Cambodia and then come back. Uh, if you uh, are planning on staying here longer than a month, you can get the e-visa. Uh, that's good for one month or 30 days, but then you can also extend that for three months while you're looking for work. Then what you're going to want to do is get a job at a school sometime within those three months, preferably within a month or two, and have your school ideally help you uh, get a work permit. And then once you get a work permit, then you can get a six month or 12 month visa. Um, and I think it's possible, don't call me on this, I think it's possible to even get a, I can't remember if it's the six or 12 month. When you, when you reapply for the first time for your e-visa, I think there's an option for a six or 12 month. I can't remember which one it is. It just costs like a lot more than if you have your work permit. But I just recommend just find a job, get a work permit. And again, talk to your school about that. Make sure that like, I would recommend like just, Either A, if they pay for it, B, even if they don't pay for it, if they at least help you through the steps or whatever. Like it just, it just basically going to the correct ministry, the Ministry of Labor and getting some, filing some paperwork. I think you have to get like a uh, health screening, which is really not much. And then you're probably good to go. And, you're, and your employer has to be like registered with the ministry. Um, but yeah, just make sure all of that with your employer. So that's the first thing, uh, obviously, with the work permit, get or uh, with the visa, get the correct visa. Don't get the tourist visa. Under no circumstance, get the tourist visa unless you're just coming here for 30 days. Because I think it's $10 cheaper. I think it's $35 instead of $45. But if you're coming here to live, uh, get the e-visa or looking for work or business visa, whatever you want to call it. All right. So now you're here. You land in Cambodia. Got your visa. Um, you know, you want somewhere to stay. Uh, most people are gonna go to what's called Riverside. Um, that's probably the biggest tourist area in Phnom Penh is Riverside. There's a million guest houses, a million hotels. I mean, you can get guest houses anywhere from maybe five or seven dollars a night up to, you know, 10 or 15 dollars a night if you want like a nice hotel. I mean, if you're paying 15 or 20 dollars a night, you should be staying somewhere relatively pretty nice uh, for that price, very nice. Um, so again, it depends on your budget. I always tell people, I don't know, come here with at least a few thousand dollars uh, minimum. Again, it depends on you. You know you better than I do. If you can get by on the bare minimum, like can you come here with like $800, $600 and get by for a month or two? Technically, yes. But are you prepared to live uh, in the, the lifestyle that you'll have to live uh, like that? You know, that's up to you. If you can get by, you know, without like running water and you know, bare minimum accommodations, you can get by on a few hundred dollars a month here. Um, but if you, you know, expect a slightly higher standard, you know, maybe you're looking at a thousand dollars a month if you want, you know, really nice standard, you know, maybe two thousand dollars a month. So that's up to, you know, whatever you're looking for. Uh, there's a lot of Facebook groups, so before you come here, you can type in, uh, if you're coming to Phnom Penh, you know, Phnom Penh, expats, there's going to be a lot of groups, Phnom Penh buy and sell groups, Phnom Penh housing groups, you look up any of them, the same is true for Siem Reap. Uh, again, I don't really know much about Siem Reap, I don't know much about Battambong. Uh, I always mention a guy called Dave Does Cambodia, who's in Siem Reap, uh, so I highly advise if you're thinking about going to Siem Reap, check out his channel. Um, he has way more information about Siem Reap because he knows about it. Um, yeah, so then you want to start looking for a job. You can apply online for jobs. You can go on some of these Facebook groups and stuff and you'll see some schools are advertising on there. Uh, the suggested method as of now, still it's uh, the end of 2018, almost 2019. Uh, but most people that are, are looking for jobs, they're just going around uh, 
physically going out to schools, just get a tuk-tuk or rent a moto or buy a moto, get a pedal bike, walk around, what have you. And there are just schools all over the place. Go on Google Maps and just type in English school, type in American school, type in international school, and you're gonna see schools all over the city. There are so many schools. <laughs> just go to all these schools and start dropping off your resume. Um, for salary, uh, so I always recommend guys in Phnom Penh at least, I would say if, if you're a native English speaker, I always have to say, this could differ if you're not a native English speaker, but if, you're in, if you come from a country that the first language is English, um, probably should be looking at least $1,000 a month for full time uh, or more. You know, obviously there's nothing wrong with getting more than that, but I always say at least $1,000. Um, and, and for full time, I mean, usually full time is six teaching hours. Now, how that is spread out in your school could be in a number of ways. Um, you might teach for two hours, have a two-hour break, teach another two hours, have a two-hour break, teach another two hours. You might teach for three hours and have a two-hour break, then teach another three hours. Um, depends how the school structures it. But generally, six hours is pretty standard uh, for what is a full-time uh, English teacher. Uh, if you want to make more money, definitely ask your school if you, know, if you can work more hours. I'd recommend though, if, if this is your first go at it, if you've never taught English before, um, or you've never taught before, um, start small, go with that six hours. Uh, I teach eight hours a day, and it's definitely, it's manageable, um, but it's also very time consuming, because eight teaching hours a day doesn't mean eight hours of work a day. That means 10, 11 hours of work a day, because there's a lot of other things that go into teaching besides standing in front of the classroom and teaching. Um, just preparing for, for your classes, grading things, uh, grading homework assignments, grading tests, quizzes, making tests, quizzes, midterms, uh, you know, any kind of extra worksheet. There's extra stuff that goes into it. And uh, I've spoken about this too before. It's kind of like what you put into it is what you get. You know, like, I don't know, if you find a good school, and if you do a really good job and you work hard, like I think you can make more money than you know what a average teacher makes or what you know your base starting pay is. But you have to be, hey, you have to be willing to put in that work. You also have to be willing to negotiate with your school, and they have to be willing to negotiate with you. Uh, like the first school that I was at, um, you know, I was, I was making an, an okay salary when I was there. Uh, you know, pretty standard. Um, I was only working part time. And I had a part, another part-time job. Uh, but anyway, so I moved to another school, and basically, like, the first school that I was at wanted me to stay there, and then I told them what the other school was paying me, and they were just like, okay, you can go to that school. Like, we just can't, there's no, in our budget, like, there's just no way we can pay you as much as they are. Um, so it's not always just on you. Like, if I didn't leave that school, like, even if I was doing the best possible work I could do, like, maybe I still would be making a different salary because the school, you know, just doesn't have the budget. It's just, you know, it's not, it's just not possible sometimes. Uh, but I recommend, like, if you can, always try to, you know, look for something different than, like, that's the thing. If you get in, like, a small school that isn't as nice, isn't as prestige, and work there six months or a year and really hone your skills, and if you, like, honestly try really hard and you honestly, like, learn from, you know, either learn from your mistakes or learn from your successes and see what's working and see what's not. And develop yourself as a teacher. Develop yourself with uh, classroom management. Develop yourself with uh, making assignments and, and seeing the progress of your students and develop yourself with not being lazy. Um, you know, sometimes you can get away with being lazy sometimes as a teacher, but that's not, at the end of the day, that's not beneficial for you. It's not beneficial for your students. And if you really like try to get away from that, try, try to stop doing things that are lazy. And you, you know, really focus on, hey, what's working for my students? What's honestly making my students better at English or better at whatever other subject you're teaching? Uh, you might teach a lot of other subjects besides English, uh, depending on your school. But you know, what's making my, what's making my students better? Uh, and what's making me better as a teacher. You know, the more you push your students, the more you're gonna push yourself as a teacher too, the more you're gonna figure out, you know, again, what works and what doesn't work uh, in terms of the, a classroom as a whole, like on an average. Also focusing on, you know, students that are stronger or weaker, um, 
you know, what works for them. There's some students that you can push harder than other students. Some students, if you push them too hard, they're gonna break, they're just gonna shatter. Uh, but there are some students that are like rocks and you can just really, you know, push them and see what they can, you know, what they can do. And then of course, you know, ease up sometimes, obviously. Uh, but you know, honing your own skills as well as, uh, you know, developing your students and yourself and just focusing on that is, you know, very important for the progress of your future. If it's, if it's something that you want, if you want to be, again, if this is something you want to do for a few years, if you want to make more money doing it, you know, get really good at it. And then either in your school, you can move up, you can make, you know, ask for raises, that kind of stuff. You can look for other schools, you can look to do things, you know, private tutoring, uh, maybe working for the government, any of that kind of stuff. These are all possible things um, that, can, that can happen. I promise you that they can happen. But it's up to you if you're, you know, if, if you don't want to put in the work and you don't want to, um, you know, go that extra mile. I know it sounds cliche and stupid, uh, but remember, there's, you know, there's a lot of people out there and there's a lot of available jobs and, you know, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice and you're taking away from yourself, like, I guess. But at the end of the day, it's what you want. Some people are just here just for, you know, again, trying to find themselves, trying to have like a good time, just trying to, you know, do some job and get by and then go out and party and do whatever and that's cool. Do your thing. Um, I guess it's, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about that because I really, I think what we're doing here as English teachers is actually a really important thing and, it, and it's a really big deal. And I don't want to sell the kids short, you know what I'm saying, if that makes sense. Um, but either way, as long as they're learning English, you're doing your thing, that's cool. But if you want to, again, if you want to thrive here, I guess, if you want to thrive, succeed, do a really good job, at least in your field, get on the top of your field, like. I don't know, try your best. <laughs> I don't mean to be like, I don't know, whatever, guys. You know what I'm trying to say? So anyway, so now let's say you got your job, uh, looking for an apartment. You can go through realtors, there's a lot of realtors here if you want to get an apartment. Um, you're probably gonna pay too much money if you go through like a nice big realtor. I got through my, I got my apartment through like a little realtor and um, he did me, he did me proper, like he got me a good deal on the place, he like negotiated for me, like he did, uh, he did good. I've been happy with my place, it's certainly far from the nicest place in Phnom Penh, like it's not like, my apartment's not like super nice, it's not that nice, but it's cheap, it's two bedrooms, two bathrooms, it's pretty big, like I'm happy with it. Uh, every once in a while I think about moving out, but then I'd rather not spend the extra money because I like... I don't know, I want to try to save money, I have a lot of things I'm trying to save for. If I can live a little bit lesser now for the next few years, but then live nicer in the years coming after that, I think is, in my mind, a better plan. We'll see, we'll see how that turns out. But yeah, so you can go through realtors, you can look online on like Facebook groups, 